What is causing the rise of anti-Indian sentiment in Bangladesh's current political climate? In recent years, we've seen a mounting anti-Indian sentiment in Bangladesh, particularly with the alleged Indian interference in national elections. This has sparked numerous campaigns on social media, urging consumers to boycott Indian products. A significant figure in these allegations is the exiled Bangladeshi physician Pinaki Bhattacharya, who has utilized his substantial social media following to fuel these claims. The Indian High Commission in Dhaka has refrained from commenting on these campaigns, leaving the response to the opposition parties in Bangladesh. These parties have leveraged the growing sentiment to accuse India of meddling in Bangladeshi politics. However, government officials have dismissed these claims, stating firmly that India has no say in Bangladesh's internal affairs. It's important to note that this isn't just about politics, it's also about economics. India is a major exporter to Bangladesh, and the two countries share a significant economic relationship. Hence, this rise of anti-Indian sentiment in Bangladesh is more than just a political issue. This rising sentiment against India and Bangladesh is not only a political issue but also an economic concern, considering the significant economic relationship between the two countries. Let's turn our attention to Nurul Haqqa Noor, a key figure in the anti-India political stance in Bangladesh. Noor, the leader of Ghana Odikar Parishad, and former vice president of DAXO, has been vocal in political meetings around Dhaka, advocating for a boycott of Indian products. His reasoning? A response to what he perceives as India's unilateral relations with Bangladesh. Noor insists on a relationship of respect, love and recognition. However, he feels that at the level of governance and policymaking, India's relationship with Bangladesh, particularly over the last 15 years, has been far from ideal. He asserts that most matters related to India's interests, such as ports and transit, have been commandeered by India itself. Yet, he notes, the recent elections have shown the opposite of what he hopes for, a relationship that respects the will of the people. With this in mind, Noor calls for India to foster a healthy relationship with all political parties in Bangladesh. He believes that the strength of the current Bangladeshi government is bolstered by India, and to counteract this, he proposes a public movement against India, drawing parallels with the situation in the Maldives. Noor believes that a movement against India is necessary, much like what happened in the Maldives, to counter the strength of the current Bangladeshi government. His stance is clear. To ensure that the political will of the people is respected, it is crucial to address the India-Bangladesh relationship head-on. While the major parties in the anti-government movement have not officially declared any direct anti-India stance or movement, criticism of India has intensified. This is the current political climate in Bangladesh, where anti-India sentiment is on the rise. In the bustling city of Dhaka, the capital of Bangladesh, banners and placards bearing anti-India slogans have begun to appear at various programs. These are not isolated incidents but reflect a growing wave of discontent towards India. The voices of dissent are getting louder and the anti-India sentiment is becoming more palpable. One of the most vocal critics of India is Mahmudur Rahman Mana, the president of Nagorika Oikya. Mana, a seasoned politician, has been quite forthright in his criticisms of India. He has accused India of not dealing with the people of Bangladesh, but instead supporting a particular party. This, he feels, is a slight to the sovereign nation of Bangladesh and its people. Mana's critique goes beyond mere rhetoric. He is of the belief that India's support for an unelected government in Bangladesh is a move in the wrong direction. He states, Relating to the people, they cannot make the statement that there is an elected government in Bangladesh. It is not an elected government. The situation is going in a negative direction now. Mana's words reflect a growing sentiment within the political circles of Bangladesh that India's interference is unwelcome. He hopes that India will realize the truth sooner, for he believes that the harm may come to them. He ends his statement with a definitive tone, stating, but I don't think we will lose much. Harm may come to them. The growing anti-Indian sentiment within Bangladesh's political climate 
is a complex issue with potential ramifications on regional relations and the economy. It's a situation that bears watching as it continues to unfold. With voices like Manas rising in intensity and number, the relationship between India and Bangladesh is entering an uncertain phase. The future remains to be seen, but one thing is clear. The criticism of India within Bangladesh is intensifying. 